How's it going guys? It's Timmy Joe and uh, just a super quick video here today. I wanted to talk about CPU fans and uh, how to control them. Uh, basically, maybe a lot of you have the same problem. I have more fans than I have headers on my motherboard and you're searching for alternatives to power the fans and make sure everything's running right and everything. And uh, I've been looking for kind of reviews on stuff like this, like this is a fan hub and there isn't much that go, you know, goes much more into depth than it plugs into your SATA and it gives you fan control. Well, yeah, sure, but uh, this is from Thermaltake. This is the Commander FX and it's just a fan hub plugs into SATA and you plug other fans into it. I bought it to use it in this case because I only have two fan headers on my motherboard for auxiliary and one for CPU. And I have, as you can count them, one, two, three, four, five fans right now. If I add my AIO in there uh, in the pump, that's six. So, you know, the, it can get, you know, to the point where you don't have any room and what, what are you gonna do? So I was thinking this thing and uh, I, I put it all together, plugged it in and it makes the fans run a full bore 12 volts like full rpm that is not acceptable it's too loud it's basically makes this thing useless and i opened it up and there's no way to control it at all it's just basically feeds 12 volts right from the you know your power supply into these fans there's no option at all to down volt it or anything because it's like this little uh, printed board that's uh, not set up for doing any sort of modification. So as far as I'm concerned, this thing's garbage unless you, you know, you're putting your your uh, computer in a LAN closet, like somewhere or, you know, somewhere far away, you're never going to hear it because with this thing running too loud. So what are my other options here? Well, uh, I've read that there is enough voltage and amperage coming off of your fan headers to run at least two fans it's better to maybe look at the specifications, but basically, uh, usually they take one amp or, or something like that, and a fan can do it will only be like three or four hundred uh, milliamps. So it makes it so you can actually run two fans quite efficiently off of one header. So you can buy these these Y splitters, and the ones I bought are a four pin on one side and it goes to four on one uh, and three on the other. That way if you have the four pin fans, uh, there's, you know, it's, it's not grabbing information from one of them. Uh, however, I'm not sure how the, this is gonna work out. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug everything in uh, with these Y connectors and I will update you to see if I can actually control the fans properly and how it's gonna work out, but I think it's gonna work out better than this thermal thing. So let's put them in and then I'll give you the results. So I got everything installed here and everything is working. A couple things I wanted to mention while I've got the case open and I'm thinking about it. Uh, number one, these splitters, they're, uh, it's the third pin that's missing. So uh, the fourth pin is there for all uh, of both fans, but the third uh, pin is missing from one, which is the one that reads the RPM. So you're not missing out on anything by using one of these splitters. As long as it can power it, I wouldn't use more than one. Uh, another thing is with Ryzen, you might not have, uh, with your motherboard, got a, P, uh, a speaker for your uh, PC, which is um, kind of an old thing, but this is what provides the beeps at, the, at post to provide you with information on troubleshooting post problems, uh, motherboard problems. It beeps. And if you don't have one of these uh, installed, it's probable that you don't even have one at all. Uh, you might just think that your boot is taking a really long time, or you might see the lights flash and cycle on your computer and your fans turn on and off. Uh, well, what this would give you is an audible beep to let you know what the, what's happening, and when your computer is good and it is about to boot, it usually just gives a simple boop, and you kind of know things are, are good. So if you don't have a PC speaker, get one. It installs on the little headers uh, around here that uh, where, where your switches and stuff plug into and it gives you valuable information on the state of your post and the state of your computer booting up and will let you know if there's an issue with your overclock but keep in mind it can take like your computer uh, cycling through a few times uh, on, on an overclock to actually boot properly 
even if your overclock is stable. It's a weird thing with, with Ryzen and memory overclocks and stuff like that, so just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this back up and then we'll make sure that all the fans are controlled properly from within the BIOS. <gasps> See what happens. Is she gonna pose perfect the first time? Ha ha ha. See, this happens with Ryzen. There's gonna be a cycle. It's trying the overclock on my RAM, I believe a few times because I have my RAM overclocked 2666 right now and the only way it does it is if you let it like, see now it booted oh no it didn't see I can see this being concerning to how long does it take to boot your computer a long time this one worked so it took cycling through four times to get to a post screen, and we're gonna go into the BIOS here and check things out. But my overclock is in, in order. It shows 2666 megahertz here at 3.925. Sometimes it will completely reset your BIOS in order to boot properly. But we saw it's like a, like three or four, I think it was almost four or five times there in order to uh, post the computer. And AMD says this is a thing that happens. By default, Ryzen will test a certain memory speed uh, three to five times, and then if it can't do it for whatever reason, either the voltage is not right or the clock speed is just too high, the system will automatically fall back to safe settings and then reboot for you, uh, rather than having to get inside your computer and re reset the CMOS or something like that. It's an automatic reset. Um, but on some very high overclocks, it might be possible after the seventh or eighth attempt to hit that clock speed. So on this motherboard, you can actually change the number of attempts the CPU will make before automatically resetting. If you're overclocking, this might happen and you might it might take a long time for your computer to boot, but it's booted, it's at the correct overclock, our fans are all working. So let's uh, go ahead into my Q fan control here and let's set uh, our curves down because I'm going to keep the CPU fan at turbo, but we'll put the chassis uh, down to standard and this chassis down to standard. There we go. Uh, and what that should do is um, make it so that the fans don't idle quite as hard and don't kick in quite as fast because I've got so much more of them and there's so much better airflow in this case. Uh, that fan profile was, uh, actually I actually haven't really touched this since uh, my old case. So that would be good. Everything's working. I don't see this being a problem. So I wouldn't recommend using this thermal take or, or any of these fan hubs unless you're willing, like you can hear, let's see, and I'm, I'm gonna boot no problem after uh, posting the first time there. Uh, unless you're not worried about fan noise. I'm Timmy Joe, you guys have a nice day. Uh, this has been how to put fans in your case 101. Bye.